Hello, thank you for joining us. We are Group 20, and we're doing our presentation on the design of clutches. We have Jason Campbell, Cynthia Enriquez, and myself, Michael Fisher, and we'll be getting into detail about how to design a clutch and the uses of clutches. What is a clutch? A clutch is, a, it is defined as a coupling that brings two moving parts together, or more specifically, two rotating shafts. When most people think of the word clutch, the first thing they may think of is Dwayne Wade from the Miami Heat or the clutch that they use to change gears inside of their vehicle. But in reality, clutches are used on everything from a day-to-day -day basis that you see in your home and at work, such as drills, uh, microwaves, and even the AC compressor that keeps you cool while you drive your car. There are several different factors which affect a clutch and separate one clutch from another. Uh, the most important one is usually the material. There's also the surface area from which the clutch plate contacts the, the shaft, and there's also the torsional springs inside of the clutch, which affect how it works. So I'm going to explain how a friction clutch works, since it's the most common and most basic clutch that's been around for the longest amount of time. When the clutch is engaged, it applies pressure to the engine drive shaft, and the contact and friction force allow the rotation from the drive shaft to transfer from the engine to the transmission. Now once the clutch is disengaged from that, the clutch removes itself from the engine, allowing the engine shaft to keep rotating at its same speed, while meanwhile the transmission gears, the momentum decreases and it allows for the, the gears to be shifted. Once that's done, the clutch pedal is then released, which allows the clutch to contact again and that brings the speed of the transmission in the drive shaft up to the same speed as the engine. Here you can see a basic diagram of how it works. When the clutch is disengaged, you'll see that the force is acting in an axial direction and only the engine crankshaft turns and once the clutch engages again, the drive shaft rotates and the crankshaft rotates at the same speed due to the frictional force from the clutch. Now I'm going to talk to you about the alternative clutch designs, particularly the dog clutch. These are typically used in marine pro propellers and heavy machinery, and they provide for a strong reliable transfer of rotational torque and typically allows for less friction engagement during engagement. This is also used while maintaining a constant speed. This is achieved by creating a set of teeth on one end of the shaft while having identical sh teeth on the other shaft. And also due to the lack of slippage on the clutch, while it's gauge, engaged and ungaged, disengaged, there's a reduction of wear and tear on the plate. And also allows for the power transfer to be immediate. I'll be talking about um, the clutch materials. Choosing the proper clutch material is um, critical for good operation. Now this can be done by looking at the car um, elements and basically knowing how much horsepower the car has and what it's going to be used for, whether it's everyday driving, um, maybe street racing, or if it's actual racing, as, such as NASCAR. Now, the main material is organic. This is the most commonly used. Um, it's composed of metal fiber, and it's known for, being a ha for having a long-lasting life, having smooth engagement, and it can withstand up to 400 horsepower. Now, when this is um, overheated, it returns to original condition, so this is good for the long lasting again. And common cars that this comes in is the Toyota Corolla, um, the Nissan Sentra, or Mazda 3, like everyday driver cars. Now, Kevlar and segmented Kevlar is another material that's used. Um, it gives us more horsepower. Kevlar reaches up to 500 horsepower, and segmented Kevlar reaches up to 650 horsepower. Um, Kevlar is known for high durability, but if it is used as an everyday driver, it may, um, it may have slippage. Now, the bad thing about Kevlar is that if used as an everyday driver, um, it, it overheats, then it won't return to its original condition, it actually works. Common cars for this are the Corvette C7, which comes with more than 500 horsepower. The carbon ceramic or material is a combined material. The, the carbon is known for, um, it's more durable and it has an abrupt engagement. And then the ceramic is, withstands higher temperatures. The combined materials are used usually on multi-puck multi discs and they can reach 500 horsepower or more. 
common cars used for this are the Jaguar XF Supercharged and the Dodge Charger SRT. Lastly, the sintered iron is the least commonly used, um, but it is used for extremely high temperatures. So this is usually used on clutches um, for racing cars such as NASCAR or cars like the Mercedes-Benz and um, SLS, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, things that are going to be used at very high speeds. It, it, is, um, it needs to fly a special flywheel surface and the engagement is either on or it's off. Now future considerations, although the electromagnetic clutch already exists, it's less prevalent in our modern society and as we move forward towards electronic, more electric vehicles being more prevalent in society, this will become more useful as far as removing the need to have mechanical hydraulical systems in the clutch and using electricity from the battery to essentially power the, the clutch. And basically by passing electricity through into the clutch, it'll magnetize the case and pull the armature forward or backwards, releasing or engaging the clutch and creating frictional contact. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.